Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, this is a, a bit of a shocker. I've got to say it. The new patch is in. Raid have done a shadow nerf, which I'm going to get into in a second. And it's, it's disgusting, honestly. They're not nerfing the broken stuff like Stone Skin or Taras or Marishka. They're nerfing a fusion, which we've all battled to get. So I'm going to go into that in a minute. But honestly, it's pissed me off because it's not in any of the information. It's like they've hidden it under the carpet. Saf has found it when he's going through his kind of like update from the patch. And it's shocking. So, um, I mean, let's get into what else is coming. So, Champion Lore is in the game. I like it. It's a good addition. Uh, I'll show you some of that in a minute. Righteous Set is coming in as the next Forge Pass. I think the set could be pretty damn juicy. Gear Selling Filters are in. And it's going to save us some time, especially for mobile players. That's all positive stuff, right? Fragment Summon Tab, we're going to check that out in a second. Priority Stats Filter, I kind of like it as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's all good. Godgar's Change is interesting. I'm going to do a video on him and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's just have a quick look here at the other improvements and fixes. So, like, so I'm sure it's not been called out. Fixed a bug around Playtime Rewards, right? Fixed a bug, visual bug on uh, daily packs, blah, blah, blah. Fixed a visual bug that caused some long names, whatever. Fixed a bug around the window with a number of arena tokens, whatever. Fixed a bug that caused an error when receiving rewards for leave, after leaving a clan. Fixed a bug around advanced quests. Fixed a bug around a back button. Yeah, that was actually annoying. Fixed a bug about win rate in Great Hall. Also annoying. Fixed a bug that caused Doom Tower leaderboard to be incorrect, right? I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it in here. Fixed a bug Ultimate Death Knight's HP bar again. It's in there for about the eighth time in a row. Have they actually fixed it? We will find out. Scaramus' turn meter. There's tons of bug fixing going on, to be fair. But I'm not seeing it. Changed AI settings so that champions under sheep are targeted with a lower priority. Okay. Okay. So I'm not seeing it anywhere. Right, I'm not seeing it anywhere at all. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to run my clan boss team, which I'm on my free to play here, right? My clan boss team for the last week has consistently done 27 to 30 million damage. Consistently, every single run. It's always against Void. It's been the same. Let's see what this one does. Whilst that's running, I'm just going to kick on with this, this fusion. So I did a video earlier. Do I think she's worth it? I've got to say, if we were guaranteed the partner, the Owlsgore partner, which might be an event coming up, we don't know. If we were guaranteed the partner, this is a decent hitting champion, a good champion who um, is decent for the arena. Yeah, she, she would have an irresistible AoE block de defense. She would get another turn after a, an AoE smack if she kills someone. And then she goes again with another hard hitting AoE. She would be very good. But both on my main and my free to play, I'm struggling to come up with a reason that I feel like I should get her when I'm not guaranteed that partner. Yeah, so on my main account, even with the partner, I don't think I would use her. On the free to play, she would definitely be my hardest hitting arena champion on the account. Yeah, so she's, I've got Skull Crown, I've got Gembo. Uh, she would come in above those in terms of like worth building, in my opinion. Uh, and I've seen some other content creators quite hypey about her. So it's worth. Checking out others like Odd One, Mac Jan, Murder Inc. All been quite positive about this champion. So don't only take my view on it, right? Because uh, if it's a relatively easy one to get, maybe you should just pick her up anyway. She could be buffed in the future. Uh, she could be changed, right? But let's have a quick look at the fusion schedule here. So we kind of go Dragon Tournament, which... Has got dungeon divers in the mix as well. Champion training at the same time. So you could kind of get dungeon divers done with those. How many points we got here? So you've got 115 points, which is normal. Summon rush is 20 points. Champion chase is 15. So you could skip champion chase if you can get the full 20 points from summon rush. Normally means you need around something like 5,000 points worth of summon rush, which is quite a lot to, to skip a champion chase. You might be able to just pick up the first five points in a summon rush, which is how I got Razelvarg, uh, and then do the champion chase if you've got more points available here. 
But ultimately, it's, it's very similar to the Razor Varg fusion um, sort of setup in terms of events. You've got arena, which you should just be able to do if you are active, two arena events. You've got all of the different dungeon events, which as long as you can kind of farm stage 13 and above, you should be able to do with your daily grind of energy. Dungeon Divers is definitely a tough one. They've made it harder over the years. You've got three of them. Uh, they normally back up, though, with something else. So like Dragon alongside Dungeon Divers alongside Champion Training. Got the second Dungeon Divers here alongside the Finite. Actually, not much kind of doubling up, just Finite with that one. And then you've got Champion Training. I guess it does kind of dovetail in, but I think they end as the other one starts. So probably not. Champion Training here, which kind of gives you a bit of Dungeon Divers, a bit of Spider as well. There's three lots of Artifact Events, which again, if you're doing all the rest of the stuff, they're tough, but you should be able to do it. So it just comes down to, do you have the Shards to do Champion Chase normally? That's generally it. Unless you just start playing the game a week ago, in which case Fusions will be very tough. But ultimately, there's enough points here to, to grab them. And you probably need to do the first chunk of Summon Rush, and then you go into the Champion Chase. So it feels like... As a fusion, it's about normal in terms of difficulty. If you've saved some resources, you've probably got a good chance that you could pick her up. It's normally down to whether you've saved enough shards and whether you've got like a few gems in the bank. Okay, so should you go for it, up to you. I've done another video showcasing her. You can go and check that out. Uh, but let's get back to the topic at hand here. I'm going to add, there's only one thing today that's made me happy, and that is this. You can... You don't have to watch the animation anymore. You can literally be like giving them some level, skip out, doing the next thing, skip out. That's a good change. So here we are. I've, I've gone from doing, on, on average, let's call it 29 mil. Today, I've done 24.85 million. Almost lost a solid 5 million damage from my clan boss run. And I'm like, what's going on? What's changed? Runs are still up there with the same level of damage, so stag. Razor Varg is what's changed. Normally, he's 9 to 10 million damage. Today, 4 million. I've lost 5 million damage overnight because they've nerfed Razor Varg. They've not told us about it. They've not told us what the change is. I'm asking the powers that be, is this meant to have happened? Is this a mistake? Because right now, I'm properly pissed off. I work my ass off. To get this rabbit on the free to play i literally worked my ass off to make sure that this rabbit came home because i did some play testing i showed you guys some videos and i was like this rabbit is absolutely going to change my account i'm just about scraping a three key again whereas i was way over the free key and had some room to maneuver nowadays this is just about going to get me over the line and some days it's going to force a four key it's not good enough and to have no Heads up about what's going on is absolutely shocking. So look, I've just bought Safin, who basically was going through some of the updates for the patch and spotted that there was a bit of a change to the multipliers. Saf, I know you've already done a video on this because you've also got a clan boss team that runs this build, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, talk us through it. What's going on? Yeah, so I was doing my usual running through the patch notes, you know, seeing what the new champion multipliers were. I was like, oh, this is a bit weird. They've changed the speed multiplier. I thought it was for something like one of the other champions like Rowan or Ghostborn, right? Because we know there's five champions in the game that can have speed multipl multipliers, but this is the first one yeah. that's actually relevant. And they've actually, like, and I was looking, I was like, what? Originally, I thought it was uh, basically they were trying to make the A1 stronger, which yep. it kind of technically is if you're running like no speed. If you're running like 100 speed, then the A1 is stronger because the attack component is higher. Sure. But what they've essentially done is in the old multiplier, the speed would be added into the attack multiplier. So it's almost like a multiplier of the attack multiplier. So, you know, for example, the average way it used to work was for the AOE abilities, 100 speed equals an extra one times attack. And then everything would add together and then it would just multiply by your attack value. So that's okay. how it kind of like grew. So the more speed you added, the more attack damage you did because essentially it added into the attack multiplier. And obviously Razavark is scaling speed all the time for his passive, right? So Exactly. You can get really, even really fast. Even someone like my one here, I've got a 230 speed Razavark. Once he stacks, he will end up being what? Like... What is it? 232? 232 speed, yeah. 
well, you get 100 from the base speed, so that's 332. Then you're probably yeah. using the aura with him, which is 20% on 110 base speed, so that's yeah. a little bit extra. Another 22, um, yeah. Not to and mention then... if you've got like a blessing aura or something, but if you haven't, then you also get the speed buff, which yeah. also goes in. So in reality, you're running probably near 460 speed in the actual battle. Yeah. If you've got that speed buff up 100 percent of the time versus the 232, so that would that would be added into my multiplier all the time, right? On, yeah. on all of his skills. So that essentially, would that would be an additional 4.6 times attack on top uh, of his yeah. base, which is 1.5, right? So the the two multipliers had a base of 1.5, and then they would add the speed on top. And the A1 was slightly different; it was like a 0 0.45, and it would multiply with the same ratio of speed, right? So instead of adding one, uh, like instead of it being like 100 speed is one attack, and then you add that on. The A1 was multiplier instead. So it's just slightly so, so, different. So in layman's terms then, what's what's it done to the multipliers? Because I'm seeing pretty much like a half amount of damage that he was doing before. Just so, under half. Yeah, so essentially what they've done is they've disconnected the two. So instead of speed being a multiplier for the attack multiplier, they've now made it so that attack is one multiplier, speed is another multiplier, and then it adds together. Right, it's, it's slightly different, so it so basically it's almost means going that, additive instead of multiplicative. Yeah, a so, little bit. Basically, it's not rounding up to a single attack multiplier. Now it's kind of going okay. Like so, for the A three, it's got a three point three times attack multiplier, and yeah. then in addition, it then adds two point four times speed. So instead right. of going, you know, if you imagine here, four hundred and sixty speed is what you were running at. That used yeah. to be a four times, a uh, four point six times attack with a one point five. So that would be an effective. 1.5 enough six quick, quick a bit math attack. here yeah. on 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 the excel that's a 6.1 but actually what's happening now is you're not getting a 6.1 times attack you're getting a 3.3 times attack with a 2.4 times 460 speed which is just right. bonus damage yeah. so basically it's 3.3 times attack whatever that is plus 1104 so ultimately, before, I mean, we're, we're talking about this is a significant nerf it's massive like, Huge, huge nerf for this champion who i was out, i was out there saying you should go out and get this champion like at first i was like, i'm not really sure is he going to be that good as soon as i play tested him i was like you know what he does damage he's bringing a lot of uh quality to clan boss or hydra teams like he can actually be a bit of a nuka a lot of those things have gone away overnight yeah. without even any any word at all they about have the pretty change. much without telling anyone which i think is the travesty of all this you know we've had like champion rebalance patch notes that come out two weeks before we've had highlights we've had new champion previews there's been test servers there's been everything yeah nobody has mentioned from player side at all that hey by the way that free champion that we just gave to everyone i say free you have to do the fusion but you know what i mean the, the fusion that everyone just got no no, no that, that's too strong we can't have that let's nerf it by not 10 percent, 20 percent, but near enough 50 percent across the board like this is your, I'm just showing your key here. So this is what you've done today, 142 yes. mil. On your Razzlevarg. for Razzlevarg, so that's on magic. Yeah, and your Razzlevarg hits for 36 mil here. This is what you did in your previous video where you were showing your team, uh, like a four for one team. You should go and check that video out, by the way. It's bloody good. But 63.6 million is what he did on his own before the change and 36 million today. Like, again, even for you, at a higher level build, you're talking about 40, 45% nerf of damage You overnight. basically have taken Seeker out of the battle. That's the equivalent damage. You've taken yeah. an entire champion that's built fully out of the damage because of that change that, you know, oh, you could argue stuff. that perhaps he was too strong. Okay, well, that's understandable. But, I mean, a 50% damage nerf. I mean, essentially what they've, they've done is they made a champion that was based around speed and then built his damage around speed. And then in this patch, they've gone, speed is not relevant anymore. It doesn't matter how fast you run it. You could run him at like 400 speed and you're still, the faster you run him, the more, more damage you lose based on the old way. Like the, the, the more speed you yeah, keep adding to the yeah. build, you're, essentially you're the you more you to, lose. You have to go with his attack multiplier now instead of a speed. Yeah. But obviously a lot of the reasons you'd be running him is because he enables you to do stuff with speed that you couldn't do before, yeah. right? So... The thing is, even if you ran 100 speed with his 100 passive, so a champion, so you couldn't even run that slow, but even if you basically ran him with zero speed, he's still doing somewhere in the region of minus 10 to minus 30% less damage without putting any speed in his build. That kind of just shows you how speed is now dead. Like the, yeah. You don't build him for speed, but the whole champion is designed to be built around speed.
nuts. Well, uh, I guess uh, we'll put it out there. I'm, I'm putting the question back to Raid right now. I'm like, is this a mistake? Was, was he meant to have been nerfed this hard? And I guess we'll get some answers. But you know what? People, people often in comments, like, they say, oh, this champion's going to get nerfed. This champion's... It doesn't happen that often, actually. And when it does, normally there's a, a fairly decent reason for it, I would say. You know, we had some champions like... Eurogrim is a good one, uh, right? Yeah, it came out and it was like, come on, he's, he's too strong for an epic. He's stronger yeah. than most legendary champions. And I can get on board with that sort of change. Yeah, if, if they came out tomorrow and said, Taras is going to be changed. Look, Taras is super strong, way stronger than every other legendary. The annoying part is they would do times 10 on these champions and then people spent a lot of money. So should there be a nerf? Well, the question is whether that's morally right to do. If it's just... Is the champion too strong? Then he probably should be nerfed, right? Yeah. But this one didn't feel like he was too strong. He's not like a PvP champion. I don't know. It just feels so stupid. Like, what a dumb thing to do. I mean, it's um, screen like it's all they're gonna do is they're gonna generate a, a a sentiment amongst the community, and I can you can't even disagree with them that unless you spend money, you don't get to keep the good stuff because the one champion that we, that you, everyone has just got from a fusion that potentially, okay, it's not like it's totally free because you still invest shards. Some people might have had to buy shards to be able to achieve it because they think it's good. Well, you're more than willing to nerf that, but then you, we've been talking about Taras and Marichka for months and how OP it is. You know, Ash did a video the other day where he's basically saying like, look, even he, you know, he sees this. When we look at the, um, the the platinum reset, like seventy percent presence yeah, so. of Taras and Marichka. Like you, you're not willing to nerf these champions, but the champion that everyone can get from a fusion that really has no consequence in terms of any competitive angle, because I've yeah. not seen Razzlevarg used in arena. Like we're randomly just going to nerf that by such a significant margin. And to be honest, I don't think outside of Arogrim, I can't remember another. I think Tormin got nerfed like two years ago. Yeah, Tormin had another. But There's he was been way some nerfs. Too strong. There was um. But he was reworked more than nerfed, right? Nerf. Yeah, definitely. He was still like, good. Gia was kind of nerfed, but wasn't nerfed. He was actually made stronger. Well, that was, was a bug um, fix because they yeah. were Brogni was breaking the game with Gia Man, so they tried to basically fix some problems. Yeah. Um, and they accidentally broke the champion and then re then kind of tried to repair the champion, then but kind of made him stronger after nerfing him. I don't really know what. It was a whole series of unfortunate events, but yeah, I mean, this change, like, it's, nobody's calling for this rabbit is too strong. Nobody's no, calling for it's not this damage is unreasonable. Time that I've seen. No. And you've now, like, especially on your free to play, I would say, you've just probably invested legendary books yeah, fully, into like, that champion because enough, he was good. Booked. Near enough. Is he fully booked? He is. He's fully booked for me, which on my free to play it's a is big a investment. massive amount of resources. And it was based on what I saw a week ago, not what I've just seen today. Absolutely. And I think that's the, that's the biggest disgrace about this is they've waited until people have actually invested in the champion and now they're going to come along and go no 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 it's too strong now whether or not like he's still a viable champion obviously 30 million the clan boss for a support champion potentially still pretty good but it's not reasonable like people may not have decided to build this champion based on his yeah. current situation um and it's not like they didn't have a test server and a bunch of other things so i just i just feel like when they do these type of changes which are significant for a champion there should be an option, and I'm not saying I would take it, by the way, in the free to pay, but there should be an option to say, do you want to reset your resources? Do you want yeah. to reset him to level one, uh, get five five-star chickens back, and get the books back? That's I it. I mean, they do it with masteries. They do it. They reset people's masteries. When they did the blessings rework, they gave everyone a free blessings rework, so it's not like it's not possible. Yeah. Um, they, just got, they just took away someone's ronda when they accidentally gave people two rondas. So it's not like the systems are not there to do it. No, um, that's it. But anyway. even then, like uh, even putting that aside, like they should be telling people with enough notice. Like w there is zero. It should at least be out there. Yeah, it's not even out there in you the know, in the notes I, in the patch notes. There is a quite a, a public sentiment that data mining is is kind of a bad thing, or in that kind of sense. It's like, but how would anyone ever know that this has happened beyond? Like people are going to be probably in the bug reports channel. I feel for the 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 community moderators now over in the raid official Discord. They are going to get bombarded with why is my rabbit doing less damage. Yeah. Why is my rabbit? Because it's going to be a bug in their head. They're like, well, my rabbit was doing twice as much damage. It's not yeah. doing that Something anymore. Something weird has happened and there's no evidence to tell me why. There's no patch note. Um, and yeah. unless I had gone into the, the actual the, the, the client data and gone, oh, I wonder what the multipliers are. Nobody would ever know. Mm. So as much as I can, you know, 
shocking shocking it's well, shocking look. But there you go. Um, we could go on for hours about this. Yeah, yeah. We? <laughs> I will link uh, Saf's video down below where he kind of goes through some of the, the more technical side of this. But uh, Saf, thanks for coming on and kind of talking us through what's changed. But um, yeah, let's hope let's hope they kind of rework again because this is not acceptable at the moment. Do a geomancer on it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Anyway, guys, look, I've been Hell Hades. This is Saf. We'll catch you later.